Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and welcome to the June 2024 shop update. Okay, so in the however many weeks it has been since the last shop update in April, um, there have been uh, a few developments, a few changes, um, mostly for the good. <laughs> First of all, uh, you might notice I'm sporting a brand new t-shirt design. So we've got the union flag in the background, some random handsome dude in the foreground, and it says uh, Rojobi Music and Language Center, and basically the, the same thing in Thai down here. So the, these are our new t-shirts. Um, I've got a couple, and uh, we've given some of our staff some of them as well, our helper staff, not the teachers. Teachers have to wear a shirt. <laughs> and uh, so actually on the, on the um, music and language centre front, uh, we've, we've started to get a little bit more busy. It's, it was a very slow start to the year, to be honest. The first, first quarter was pretty poor. Second quarter was a little bit more, but it's starting to pick up a little bit. Um, we've got a fair few new students. We've got something in the region of about 120 to 125 students now. Um, so the numbers are creeping up, and uh, as such, you know, we we um, we've been <sighs> lens is a bit dirty. Let me just give that a wipe. We've been hiring and firing a few teachers, and uh, you know, we've actually I have to say we had a let had to let a teacher go recently sorry just clean the lens we had to let a teacher go recently um, quite a new teacher to us um, she was constantly late um, and moreover didn't see it as a problem uh, okay so we're you know we're a small family run business um, when our I'm gonna call them customers but you know students and their parents when they sign up for a course, they sign up for a certain type of service and quality. And, you know, we've always, ever since we began this on our own, we've always strived to give <coughs> our students, customers, the best possible service, the best possible quality. Um, as far as I can remember, I've never been late for a day's work in my life. It's just the way I am. And uh, when we interview any new teachers, we always say to them that one of our number one criteria is you must always be on time. Um, you know, as I said, it's a small family run business. We cannot afford any kind of mistakes or, or you know, bad attitude, whatever behavior. Uh, and this particular teacher, she was, she taught three or four days a week here. And uh, about 75% of the time she turned up late between sort of 10 and 15 minutes late, well, say five to 15 minutes late. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if you turn up five minutes before your lesson is due to start, you're late. Um, you know, we, it just makes sense in this type of work, you know, teaching, you should arrive at the very least 15 minutes before your lesson is due to start, just in case any preparations need to be made or there's any changes, any information that needs to be swapped. Uh, and as I said, this, this particular teacher was always late, around about 10 minutes late most of the time. And on one particular occasion last week, um, we had a brand new student. They just signed up for their course. Um, it was for um, Wednesday or Thursday morning, I can't remember. A two hour lesson, 10 to 12. Well, she was late again with this for this brand new student with you know the student little, little kid about three years old and his mum sitting there waiting and waiting and after half an hour I decided I was just going to step in and, and teach this student and apologize profusely to the to the mother um, you know for this really bad situation and she was absolutely fine. She said, it's not a problem. You know, it's fine. She speaks a fair bit of English. But I said, no, it is a problem. It's very bad. So I said to her, from now on, I will teach your boy. And then the teacher finally turned up 10 minutes later. So 
40 minutes late, 40 minutes for a, not only a lesson, but a brand new student. I said to her when she came in the door, uh, you might as well turn around and go home again. We've no further need for you. And we, you know, she's had plenty of warnings because she's always late and we always say to her, please, please, please make sure in future you turn up on time. So it's not like she hadn't had warning. So um, the wife was there and she said, okay, sit down, I'll, I'll talk to you. And I carried on talk, uh, teaching the student while she spoke to this teacher. And, but she couldn't see the problem. She's, what's the problem? But you're 40 minutes late. 40 minutes. Well, I'm not normally late, but which is, A, was a, wasn't true because she's almost always late. B, that's not the point. You've just turned up 40 minutes late for a brand new student. And, and so the wife explained to her, said, look, this, this is not good enough for us. We can't accept this. You've had plenty of warnings. You're always late. We can't use you anymore. Uh, uh, so this was on Wednesday or Thursday, and she, and she said, uh, you know, we can't use you this weekend either. You know, it's, it's, we're done. And she was like, why? What's the problem? Oh, come on. Anyway, <laughs> so that's a separate issue. So, but yeah, well, I mean, we're, you know, we, we've hired several new teachers since, since the la my last uh, shop update. And, you know, things are going quite well. It's still a little bit slow, but, you know, it, we're doing all right. <coughs> okay, as far as the uh, shop stroke workshop is concerned, um, so I have shown uh, in previous episodes my, um, my little Darja DJ6 laser engraver. I mean, this cost me about 4,000 baht, roughly equivalent to about 100 pounds, $120 there or thereabouts. Cracking little machine, really is good. I was, I was surprised at how good it is for being a small, cheap thing, but it's really, really good. And, um, you know, I've, I've done various things with it. I made myself a, a little key ring as well. So I've got Rojo B on one side and music on the other. And, uh, you know, I've, I've made quite a few things with it and it's really good. But uh, you may also remember me saying that although it's a good machine, uh, I need to upgrade to a bigger, better, all singing, all dancing machine. Well, guess what? I have done it. So let me just turn the camera around and oh, it's hard for me to see what's going on. Okay, so this is my new machine, and uh, it costs considerably more than the small one. And it really is uh, an all singing, all dancing. So let me just grab the manual, and I'll show you what particular model this is. So it's an Atom Stack laser engraver, and the model is an A5M50 Pro. Atomstack A5 M50 Pro, and it is a cracking machine. You know, it's uh, my my little laser is um, it's a three watt laser laser module or laser head. This one is five point five watt, which doesn't really sound a lot more. I mean, it's almost double, but it's much more powerful and much more versatile. And um, with this one, I've got uh, a. 400 by 400 millimeter um, engraving area, so it covers a much bigger area. My small one is is uh, um, uh, it's 80 by 80 millimeter, and as I said, that's absolutely fine for the small stuff. But this one is 400 by 400, so I can do much much bigger things. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I have been, you know, experimenting with it and, uh, you know, playing around and I've, I've engraved quite a few things already. Um, so let me just turn the camera back around. I'll sit back down again. So that's the machine. There's not much to see at the moment and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, so um, as I said, I have made a few projects with this machine. So one of them, this was the first thing I made actually, and it's... Um, it's my QR payment code and you know I, I just did it on this piece of wood and I've, I've put um, a frame around it as well and then lacquered the whole thing so this was my first project on that new machine now 
it's not perfect, but that's mainly because of this material. This is really cheap, nasty, horrible plywood. Uh, you know, and I did sand it obviously prior to the engraving, but it's 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 very um, <coughs> rough and uneven. So the engraving wasn't perfect, but it's pretty good. So that's my my uh, QR code for receiving payments. And um, I've done a few other things. Um, so uh, my wife liked that one so much, she wanted me to make one for her QR code. So. I've got one, got hers here, and this is on a on a box, uh, a little little wooden box. Uh, this one came out much nicer than mine. Um, so this is like the second thing I've ever done. And one thing I've I've learned that I I should be sanding it afterwards to get rid of these sort of scorch marks around the edges. Um, I know that now. This it's fine. So this was a box I had with my Forstner bits in. So I've done this on one side, her QR code, and I've done this on the other side, Projovi Music and Language Center, and it looks really, really good. And as I said, this, this was the box I had my fourth of it in. I'll put those in something else now. And inside the box, um, I put these uh, nice kind of, they're like foam rubber inserts. I had, I had quite a lot of this, and I cut it down to size and, and inserted it in there and glued it in. But before I did that, uh, the outside of this wood is like 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick, and I was concerned I was going to burn through it. So before I did the laser engraving, I also, you can't see it now, but I put a, another piece of ply inside here and here. So it was, it, it was, I think that was like 3 mil, so it ended up 4.5 to 5 mil thick altogether, which meant that I wasn't going to burn through whilst doing the laser engraving. And then I'll put these nice foam mat, mats, I guess you call them. So my idea or my thinking with this is you could put business cards in there or um, leaflets or something like that. So that's a nice little, uh, she loved it. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with that, to be honest. And once I'd done it, I gave it like four or five coats of lacquer and, uh, you know, to, to protect it so it doesn't fade and doesn't, you know, get rubbed off and stuff. Um, so that's that one. Then I got a bit brave. Um, some of you may have seen in recent videos that I'd uploaded, I made a banjo, a five string banjo. <coughs> and I took a gamble and uh, decided I was going to engrave my logo on the, the head, the body, if you like, of the banjo. And here it is. There we go. So RM, Rojobi Music. I am proper pleased with that. That turned out really nice, really nice. Uh, so that's my five string banjo that I made. And I also, um, I'd al already done those with my small laser. So this, the logo in, you know, small version of the logo and my name, did those with the small laser one, once I built this thing. But this I did, you know, just about a week or so ago. And I'm really happy with the result of that. It looks amazing. Now, once uh, word got about around this wall that I was doing this kind of work, um, there's there's a, a coffee stall down the end of the other end of the mall. It's not a coffee shop. It's a coffee stall, and um, they they've got their own particular logo, and they wanted me to make them a key ring with that logo on it, which I did. Didn't charge them much money, just you know, a, a, a minimal amount, and uh, so I put their logo on one of these key rings. They, they liked this design. I've got lots of different types of key ring. Light here is bad. So it's, it's um, you know, quite dark wood with a, a leather strap and then the ring on the end. So I did their logo on both sides of one of these key rings. Normally I only do one side, but I thought, you know, support local business and they'll support us. And they loved it, so, they sent me something from their, their stall for me to engrave. And what it is, it was um, a cylinder about this tall and about this round, um, made of aluminium. And uh, what it was, it was a bottle opener. So it, you know, it's, it's I said it's an it's a, uh, aluminium 
cylinder with the bottle opener up inside, spring loaded. So you, you know, you push it onto the top of the bottle and you know, takes the cap off. Now I haven't got that item here because I send it, sent it back to them because obviously it was there, but I did take a photograph of it and I've got it mounted in this frame. Um, and the only reason is to, you know, to keep, it's just on, you know, printed it on a piece of paper and I want to protect it and display it in my shop window. So it's kind of hard to see it with the, the light reflection and everything. But as I said, this thing is, is like three inches high, three or four inches high, inch and a half or two inches across, <coughs> made of aluminium. And so it's got their logo on it. You see that little coffee pot? And it's something in Thai coffee and something else as well. So yeah, quite hard to see with a reflection, but that turned out absolutely brilliant, perfect. And uh, <coughs> now, because that's cylindrical, um, for those of you who don't really know how a laser engraver works, it's just a laser that goes backwards and forwards and left and right and engraves whatever it's set to do, which is fine on a flat surface. But when you've got a cylinder, because the laser has to be at exact distance from the workpiece to engrave evenly. So when you've got a cylinder, you need one of these, which I also bought with my machine. Um, it's a roller. So you've got two rollers here and here, and you can adjust those up and down closer together and angle them and all sorts of things. Um, it also comes with an extension piece for doing like wine glasses and things like that. Um, and that's obviously the same brand, Atom Stack. Um, I think this is the R, R3, this model, I can't remember. Anyway, so, uh, and this, you know, plugs straight into the machine and uh, the, the machine works on X and Y axes. Uh, so this eliminates one of the axes and this becomes the other axis, whether it's X or Y. Um, and that's how, that, this is what you use to engrave cylindrical objects or round objects. Now, I also wanted to engrave my, my little cup with, with my name or logo or whatever. But the problem you face here with the handle is, you know, bump, it's either going to bump onto this or onto the laser head itself. Um, so, although this will be useful for many applications, it's not going to work for things like this, cups with handles. So I'm going to have to buy another roller, and they're quite expensive, but that, that one is called a rotary roller, and the other one I need to get is called a chuck roller. So chuck as in drill chuck, same sort of thing. So what that will do is it will hold the cup like so, like a chuck and then, you know, a rotate, and it, all of this is, you know, free area. So you've got the machine this end, or the, the roller with the clamp, and it will clamp onto it, and, and it can, you know, go through 360 degrees and not hit anything. So, you know, you could clamp it like that, or like that, and it's got three different um, sets of jaws with it, so it'll either clamp like that, or like that, sort of on the inside, um, you know, if you needed to sort of engrave right up to the edge sort of thing. So that's a really decent bit of kit. I need to get one of those, uh, but they're quite expensive, so not yet. Uh, okay, so what else have I done? I think that's pretty much all of it for now. Um, I've got my adjustable platform that, that I bought before, and I put a, an extra larger um, platform on the top, and you can see I've painted it black. At the moment, it's got some cling film over it as well, just to protect that paint. So I'm going to engrave this, going to, I'm going to do lots of things. I'm going to experiment with engraving glass and metal and all sorts of things, but there's quite a process to that, which I will come to in a later video. I'll do a, you know, demo, demo video of this laser engraver. Not today. Why you ask? It's broken. <laughs> yes. <coughs> My brand new, all singing, all dancing, expensive, uh, laser engraver is broke. Now, quick story behind that. Um, I, you know, been experimenting with all sorts of projects, and you know, some turned out amazing, some of them not so good. So, you know, redid them, and 
I'm just getting used to, you know, using this machine. And uh, it, I've also downloaded the proper software for it, a 30 day free trial, but I will be buying the license for that uh, when that expires. But the, the software is quite complex and I'm learning to use it slowly with the help of YouTube tutorials and all sorts of other things. Um, and I, it's, what, what's happened, the, the, the laser diode itself, so the actual laser beam has stopped working. All of the motors and everything else on the, on the machine still works fine, but the, the actual laser beam itself is not working. Um, now, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know if I killed it myself by doing something wrong or if the, the component itself was already faulty and you know due to expire any day anyway i don't know i'm going to be perfectly honest i may have killed it myself <laughs> or it may have already been faulty i absolutely do not know but i have been in contact with the seller and luckily they are going to after some negotiation and explaining and you know sending videos of the problem they are going to well they are sending me uh, a new laser diode which is fantastic because to, to let me just no, it's okay. because for me to replace it it would be very expensive but they're sending me another one free of charge happy days however it is going to take 20 to 25 days <laughs> uh, and that was from four or five days ago so i've still probably got two to three weeks to wait for this thing bit frustrating but there you go that that is life now when that when that arrives and i install it try it and everything's working and uh, you know I'll, I'll do a few practice runs and then i will make a video on that no. oh excuse me <laughs> um because it is a cracking machine i mean like i said my my little Dadja, Dadja, whatever it is awesome little machine for its price and its size and it's you know um limited range i mean it, it will only engrave areas of up to you know 80 by 80 millimeters but like i said for key rings uh name tags um for you know animal name tags and you know all sorts of things like that it's absolutely perfect but for the bigger jobs i need the bigger machine and it was a lot more expensive and it's a lot more versatile it's more powerful and uh i'm really looking forward to getting into some projects with it when my new laser diode arrives. <laughs> <coughs> so, as I said, this, this, um, my small machine is three watt. The laser itself is three watt. The new machine is 5.5 watt. Um, but I've later discovered that, um, I perhaps would have been better to get the 10 watt version. Um, so that might be something else I get later on, get an additional machine uh, of 10 watt which is more powerful, obviously. Um, so it's, it's better for doing the, the bigger jobs, really. Um, but it's not as fine on the detail. So the, the five and a half watt machine I've got now is much better for, for the fine detail and the big jobs. But you know, the, the more powerful one for bigger jobs would be faster, you see. So, you know, it's, it probably, I probably will get uh, the 10 watt machine eventually not right now because it's you know about the same price as i've just paid for this one not cheap a few hundred quid so that will come later and that extra um roller as well for doing these cups with handles and things so it really is a learning curve um i mean regular viewers of mine will know that i'm rubbish with computers at the best of times so trying to get my head around some you know new software which is quite complex very complex actually is is proving to be a bit of a headache but like i said i'm watching youtube tutorials and you know doing all the research i can and i'm learning quite a lot i just can't experiment right now um but i'll get there um so that is it for the june 2024 shop update um i'm pretty sure that in the july one things will have moved on again various things oh one more thing i forgot to mention you may have noticed I'm not sweating much because up in that corner there, just 
where is it? There, there it is. Air conditioning, yes. Had that fitted a few weeks ago and it's completely different in here now. I can work without passing out. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm just about to run out of time. So, um, still not sure what the next project will be. Probably concentrating on the engraving for, for the time being at least. And uh, that's gonna be coming soon. So in the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other. We will see you soon. Peace, out.